So how do you open a can with a big axe? Let's say you forgot your can opener or small knife all you have is an axe or in a survival station. Anyways, there is a pretty easy way to do it. Instead of trying to get into the corner like that, you wanna lay it like this, but first you wanna poke a little hole. And instead of hitting it like that, what you wanna do is lift it and smash it like that. And you wanna get the sharp edge we probably should do it like this actually and we really want to poke it through first of all it's kind of bending it because that sucks it is not sharp cornered oh well we try and see what happens there you go we cut it to a little line carefully then what we're going to do is lay it this sharp edge and very carefully we're gonna just uh, push it to instead of axing it we're just going to push it and the whole idea for you is try to block as much liquid from coming out and that's it make sure you have gloves on it will be very very sharp and you open the can pretty easily I mean not the ideal but again if you try to smash it like that you're just not gonna go anywhere you're just gonna keep bending the can that's why i try to find the edge of a sharp end and try to go like that till till you find that weak spot and it will just cut through there you go for some reason you gotta go around a few times different angles for you guys and just cut it like that boom and the axe will stop the from the water coming out works every time look how much more liquid there is kind of similar effect that I did many many years ago how to open a can with the machete but with the axe as you can see it works too just make sure you clean it off really really good maybe even sanitize it uh, new axe it's a little bit easier to know if it's clean but make sure it doesn't have any kind of oils on it either sometimes you put oil on an axe so that way it does not rust but let's do it on this side let's try to smash it you see it's just not going to cut through and one more time on this side just to show you guys i know i'm making a mess a little bit but it's okay birds will eat it instead of smashing it we lay it like that and we chop to a little hole this end actually ended up being easier from one shot so maybe you should do it on that end and then we just grab it and break it too how cool is that pretty easy and fun way to do it definitely possible to open a can without really smashing it in half like that <laughs> it will make way more mess than what i just did so pretty awesome the more you practice the better you're going to get at it make sure you clean your axe for more that water too how to open a can with a knife got right here regular folding knife pretty sharp let's say you forgot yourself a can opener and you went camping brought some of this with you anyways let's see how it works make sure you have some kind of gloves so you don't cut yourself there is a couple methods i want to put to the test let's say you have solid food over here what you want to do is stab it like that and instead of stabbing in the knife like this you're gonna set it like that and kind of hit it with the can and let the gravity do the thing and once we stop it too what we're going to do is just cut it all the way around again make sure you have gloves this is really the fastest the easiest way to do it you have solid food here no problem do you like that i like that a lot too so that makes it really really easy without kind of squishing it and cutting it when you have solid food 
But when you have liquid in a can, this method will not work because most of it you probably will lose. So let's try another way. Same thing, don't fight with your hand stabbing it this way or don't fight with your hand hitting it this way. The best way to do it, sometimes I forget to do it too, but you want to grab it, hold it like that and hit it with a can. One layer top, look at that. The knife is going to get stuck really good in there. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna go all the way through and oh, it's kind of slippery. Oop, you see what I'm saying? If it was on our side, we would have lost all that liquid. Let me remove that paper because it's sliding through, cheap can. So what you wanna do is pull this knife to the side like that and then one motion. This is how I like to open a knife. I mean, a knife. Open the can, boom. Kind of slide it to the side. But make sure you have a lot of knife control. You don't want to cut yourself. And look at all that liquid inside there. If you're not comfortable with that one motion, you could do it much slower. Obviously, looks like you can do it just like that. You can do it with a can like this. I think heating it on a table or on a rock is way easier and look at that you don't have to go fast one motion you can just go in and out and cut it so that way it doesn't slip out a little bit safer this way I seen people could just go like Vroom! and one way all the way around. I'm not all the way there yet, but that's how you open a uh, can with a knife. Make sure your knife is really clean and you want to get it pretty deep in there and have very high control with that and make sure you have some kind of gloves in case it slips out. You don't want to cut yourself. So, very simple way, open a can with a knife. Make sure you clean off your knife after that. By the way, after a couple of cuts, look how smooth it gets over there. Once you practice, you could probably do it after first cut. Very, very smooth, very sharp, be careful. Same thing with this one. You see how smooth it is after first couple cuts? Once you get into that groove, you're gonna cut it so easily. It's like almost separating it. It's been raining for the last four days. All the kindling and layer twigs has been really moist around here. So all I have is a bunch of firewood like that. But you're not going to get a match or a lighter and get the whole log on fire. So today I'm going to show you how to get easy kindling out of these logs. Here's a cool way to start a fire called feathering. So you grab your knife and go from the top all the way down. It's nice to have some kind of gloves. And you really want to go from the top down. We're going to shave it off a little bit on one level. And we want to have this nice long feathers. It takes a lot of practice to get this nice, nice long feathers without going into too deep. Right now I'm just getting tiny shavings. Oh, there you go. Just get yourself a really, really nice, comfortable position and you have some good feathers or shavings, whatever you want to call them. I've done this, but you know what? I've done this before with the light knives. It's not as easy as heavy axe. Maybe I'll get myself some kind of heavy knife and we'll try this again. So far so good, practice makes it perfect, I feel like it could be done way better. Let's see if the knife can do a little bit better. Wow, actually probably could, a little bit more control feels like. Wow, look at that. Okay, I have a bunch of shavings inside here. 
see what happens. There you go. Something is on fire. Get yourself pieces like that. Put on top of it, especially the ends. You see, the ends is really easy to light up. Put it into all this other stuff. Obviously, after that, you can put smaller moist sticks and they will die out and will get on fire. I would have put it a little bit earlier, but you see how moist it is. It's smoking a lot, but it's hot enough to where it's going to burn. Boom, we got a fire going. So you got yourself a dead lighter, non-refillable one, super cheap, no gas in there as you can see at all. But the sparker is still super super powerful. How can we still use it to start a fire in a survival situation or even in a camping? So get yourself toilet paper out. Boom. Could be anything, could be even a napkin. And let's see if it works with one spark. As you can see, if you're just going to try to spark at it, chances are you're not going to get light. Here's the secret how to actually do it. Get yourself toilet paper, maybe fold it up together. Get your other candle ready and like glass and everything like that. And instead of sparking it, you want to just slowly rotate the drum without sparking it. And you want to keep doing it till you accumulate the shavings of this striker inside of it. Or flint, whatever they call them. Probably be easier to do it like that. There you go. Once you get the system going, you're going to shave up a lot of stuff. I want to do it for sure, so I'm going to do it a little extra. The reason why we do it without spark because we are accumulating the shavings, the stuff that haven't been burned out yet. Oh, it wasn't enough. You see what I'm saying? There you go. I feel like I got the technique to where I'm getting the good amount and my finger is not hurting. And I'm not sparking so often. You really don't want to have any sparks and have a lot of that good stuff in it. So you can actually see the dark area in there. Oh! Next time I'm all bring up broken up toilet paper. Okay, let's see if it's going to work this time. We have all that powder in there. We're gonna put it together. I don't know if it's going to be enough or not, but there you go. Once it's together, it's way, way better. Then get yourself a piece like that and, I don't know, get it really, really nice and fluffy pieces right here. And then we're going to try to spark it, see what happens. Yes, we got the fire. So it's not going to work every single time. Make sure you get all the other candle in next to you right away because toilet paper is not going to burn very very long time and boom toilet can save your life and a dead lighter or at least not ruin your camping tape that way you can still have a fire even though your lighter has been dead and that way you can eat and boil water while you're camping very nice just make sure you put now dry grass and things like that this is why it's nice to have five starters like that. Look at that. It's very, very fluffy. You open it up, it's saturated with something. So, whenever you spark it, there's chances you're going to get it on fire. Looks like we need to fluff it up a little bit more. Since it's just a dead lighter, it's a little bit harder. There you go. This is very, very fluffy. Let's see if it works. Boom. <laughs> works very good. So if you have fire starters like that, it's even easier to start a fire with a dead lighter. And look at that, that is going to burn for a while. You're going to be able to start a fire. It's like a big match. White duct tape is so awesome in a survival kits. Or especially you should put a little bit of a duct tape. This one not so good. 
on top of your fire steel. What we're going to do, piece like that, break it up. It's definitely melting, but it's not getting on fire. Let's see if the Gorilla tape is going to be better. That other stuff was some kind of cheap stuff. So let's take off a piece. And what we're supposed to do is break off in the tiny pieces like that. Everything is super rainy right now. Tiny, tiny Marasi Dojd. That's what we call it. Tiny rain. And let's fold it up. So you just rip this duct tape into pieces, okay? And what we'll do is mush it up a little bit. Okay, will it actually work? Let's find out, because that's what I saw everybody was doing. Nothing. So all this videos online telling you that duct tape is gonna work so good. I think it's best to do it with the lighter. Or if you wanna do it with the stacker, you'll have to have magnesium. So we're gonna get some magnesium going. Then we're gonna push it together. There's plenty, I hope. And let's stack it. Oh, missed it. Okay, and then we're gonna get the duct tape going. Boom. That's probably the best way to use the duct tape or use actual lighter or a match. So that way you only use one match and you have pretty nice candling. If you don't have any other candling, look a little bit of a duct tape. Works really good. I saw videos, they actually worked for them to strike it. As you can see, for me, it didn't, didn't work that well. So then, we put other twigs on top of it, even though it's wet. Look how tiny they are. We have plenty of duct tape to get that fire going. Even with, with the moist twigs. As long as they, they're tiny like that. You hear it crackling? All that moisture coming out. Okay, I'm gonna give it a second and see how it's going to burn. There's a little bit of a other duct tape. Let's see if it's going to burn good too. Not as good, look, it's mostly melting. So get yourself a higher quality duct tape if you want it to burn really good. But yeah, look at that. Smoking a lot with all that moisture, but we're getting it going. I like it. Look at that. And it's just self-explanatory. Make sure you have a lot of small twigs and then you get yourself bigger and bigger, bigger pieces till you can start putting logs in. So a little bit of a duct tape. If you cannot find any other fire starters, you can always do that.